Now, thanks to 90 Mile Wines and Anytime Fitness Glenelg, it's Chewing the Fat with Bevan Jones. Well, g'day and welcome to Chewing the Fat. And amazingly, Contacts Netball Club are going for three premierships in a row this year in the seniors and reserves. And we've got the great, the great pleasure tonight of being joined by three of their stars who have also gone on to play netball for the Thunderbirds. To my left is their skipper, Georgia Beaton. To my right is Charlie Hodges. And to her right is Gia Abernathy. Girls, great to have you all on Chewing the Fat tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Georgia, we'll start with you. Um, talk us through your journey. Um, you started here with Contacts and, uh, and then going into playing for the Thunderbirds as well. Yeah, um, well I started in the sub-primaries um, back in the day, a long time ago now, uh, and uh, I guess just progressed through the junior grades, played with the State League um, when I was 16, and then went up to the Thunderbirds, and then back down. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yourself, Charlie, talk us through your experience. Very yeah. similar to GB, so yep. I started in primaries and went through the ranks and did the whole state stuff as well, so 17s, 19s, 21s, and then couple of years of being a training partner lucky enough to last year be with the Thunderbirds full-time I got called up training partner again this year but I went over to New Zealand and I played for the Northern Stars in Auckland so that was cool and now back with Blues which is awesome. And, and Jay, you've also spent a bit of time overseas in Scotland and that yeah talk us through your journey so far as well. Yeah so unfortunately pretty much the same as these <laughs> in terms of where we started both in juniors contacts coming through training partner with the Thunderbirds and, and had a few games with them which was good and then moved over to the UK uh, last year to play for the Sirens over in the UK. Super League so arrived home in May and wanted to get back into the Blues environment and luckily they welcomed me back with open arms so. And how did you girls find sort of playing overseas and the difference between playing say overseas and, and, and in Australia? Yeah so uh, overseas uh, last season was actually pretty exciting a lot of the mm. National Roses players came home to play because World Cup this year was in Liverpool and they wanted to um, have a season back on their home turf so it really lifted the intensity and the, the level of competition so it was a very exciting season. Mm. And Charlie New Zealand? What? Yeah New Zealand's a different kettle of fish um, so they're only allowed one import per, per team so I was lucky enough to be that import um, so the style was pretty stock standard you get what you get every week that classic um, zone style New Zealand style so I was able to learn every single week exactly what we were playing against and lucky enough to also play against the most of the Ferns girls as well because there's only six teams in the New Zealand league so got to get a bit of a taste of that international level against them. Terrific that would have been an amazing experience. Yeah it was good. And it was yeah. Good, yeah. And um, Georgia, we spoke about this off-air, there's apparently 31 of your teams are playing finals out of 35 possible teams this year. <laughs> what makes Contact so strong? Oh look, I think um, there's a really great culture here. Um, we've got some good programs with our juniors getting um, developed quite early. We've got Marg Angove, um, who's involved with the coaches at the junior league. So um, they're really brought up in this really professional environment. And I guess you know the players that we use, they even start them on them really early. So mm. they grow up, and everyone sort of has this same blue style. And I guess it's successful. So <laughs> um, you know when they're practiced enough in it. It's, um, it's clearly working and yeah the teams are getting some success. And what do you girls think makes contact so strong Charlie? Me? Um, I definitely think the same and it's more like a family. I guess some of your best mates are in your team. I remember my first team I actually played with Gia's sister and mm -hmm. we're all um, really great friends still and that was when I was 11. Um, and there's no real temptation to ever leave because whatever team that you are in you're welcome with open arms and they support you no matter what so it's really good. Wonderful. And Gia? Yeah I agree with both of them. Um, I think just our coaches Mm. our level of coaches and, and the support that they get all through the juniors I think is a true testament to the senior coaches so um, these girls are just learning skills and developing a lot more at, an, at a higher standard compared to other clubs which is good and hence why we've got so many teams in finals so yeah it's a mixture of everything but it's all working mm. which is great. Mm. And uh, in terms of your coach Leanne, it's time to throw her under the bus a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> what makes Leanne such a good coach? Um, I don't, I think I played a season with her, um, I sort of <laughs> coattailed in and um, I was wing defence as well so personally I, um, I really like that, you know, she was that wing defence that I looked up to when I was in juniors um, mm. and then sort of I came in and um, I'm now learning from her on, on the other side but she just, I think coaches with that um, real player mentality, like she knows how to convey what she wants to say really well and in a really practical sense that um, I guess we come up 
from the bench and we know exactly you know sort of what our new direction is or you know she'll pick up things that we'll be feeling out on court and she's just really keyed into that kind of stuff. Mm. And so Charlie, what's your thoughts? Um, I definitely think um, Leanne goes out of her way to develop relationships and develop that respect with players and I think it's more when you go out there and you're doing it for each other but you also want to do it for your coach as well um, out of respect and also she is more of a motherly figure. She definitely, she, so she brings her kids out all the time so she does feel like you're not related but <laughs> you're a bit closer to her than she's not just a coach she's very approachable yeah. so you never feel like you can't ask the questions and that ask those hard questions and I she doesn't feel like she can't ask them as well so I guess that respect relationship is something massive that she focuses on and it really works especially for I guess our girls um yeah. one of the big um, values that we are all brought up on is that respect and um, being open to everyone else and reaching out to each other. <laughs> <laughs> and Jay, your thoughts? Yeah, uh, one thing she's really good at is communication. So everybody knows where they stand with her, whether they're in league or resis or a bit in between. She never sort of leaves anything to last minute and everyone's on the same page, which I think is where a lot of that respect comes from. Yes. Um, so you want to do well for her. And she's got great support with our assistant coaches, Jane Fitzgerald, who also played with George and I, and I think you had a season with her, and mm -hmm. Sarah Bidmar as well. So we're pretty fortunate that they're the three that are the ones that are guarding us sort of through this finals campaign. And yeah, yeah very, very fortunate to be, be coached by all of them. Mm. And what's the difference between playing, say, on a Friday night at Priceline Stadium versus um, playing in the Suncorp Super Netball, Netball League? <laughs> well, these guys would have to answer that. I, I played when it was ANZ champs. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, obviously the standards um, lower, you know, there's not that real high, um, super high international quality netball, but um, you know, it's certainly very competitive mm -hmm. um, and you know, the, um, the teams really have that history with each other and given that a lot of us players and particularly with us and Matrix, there's been that real core group that have moved through. So, um, you know, that you're finding a little bit in the Suncorp that players are moving around, you know, season by season, but we have a real history um, with a lot of clubs in the league. So um, when you do come up against them in finals, it's, there's that real bit of heart mm -hmm. behind you as well. So mm -hmm. I think that's a big difference. Like a Port Nord rivalry kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah it goes example. back, back, back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and what's your thoughts, Charlie? Definitely that um, I guess there's more to the um, contacts and all the state league because no one's really getting paid to play. So everyone's rocking up because they genuinely, they want to be there and they want to be there for their team. So I guess, not saying that there isn't um, passion and value when you play for SSN. Of course you do, that's your job, but this is more than a job. I think you come here to, um, it's a, kind of a hobby and you come here to escape as well and you go on Friday nights because you genuinely do enjoy it and um, you're not doing it for the money, you're doing it for each other. And I think that's really a key value of this competition is Everyone's doing it for the love of the game, and that's what brought us all together from the first place. So that's good. Probably helps towards uh, winning three in a row. Yeah, as well, definitely. So, yeah. And Jay, your thoughts? Yeah, it's definitely that little bit um, extra motivating to think that it could be three in a row. But we kind of don't look at it like that. We just want a premiership. We want a premiership every year, and this just happens to be the third year in a row that we are going for it. So um, a lot of people talk about the Garville context rivalry. Um, a lot of our parents sort of grew up watching that rivalry, which um, they've definitely been a strong team, but that Matrix contacts rivalry that's happened in sort of the last five to ten years that's been building is um, a really strong one and there's a lot of respect between the two teams. So I think, yeah, all of us sort of getting around each other, looking forward to those Friday nights. Like Charlie said, you do it because you genuinely want to be there and you genuinely want to take it to the best. So, yeah, very much looking forward to whoever we face in a couple of Fridays' time. Mm -hmm. And um, I spoke to Margot, Margango recently, club legend you spoke about before yeah. as well, girls. Um, <laughs> now, she's got that kind of philosophy where you, you play hard, but you also party hard. Now, <laughs> no doubt you've had some big <laughs> end-of-season trips in recent years. Um, do you want to sort of share some stories, or is that something you can't remember? Oh, you know what happens in Vegas. But no, no, um, you know, we certainly celebrate the wins. Um, yeah. And there has been a little talk of um, play like you party with us. But but, um, you know, we uh, we certainly don't party unless there's something to celebrate. So um, that's what we're striving for. And, you know, we really are friends off the court, um, which sounds a bit cliche, but it just makes it all that more um, fun when we do get together for social events and, and stuff like that. And, and Mark certainly gets around it as well, so don't let her <laughs> tell you otherwise. Yeah. And you've got to dress up night tonight, which is just terrific. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 Charlie, your thoughts? Definitely work hard, play hard, party hard, but has to be earned. There's no use of partying when you've had a shocking season. I guess it's back to the drawing board after that, but definitely celebrate the wins, celebrate the, small, the small things as well. And um, yeah, I think we do well on off court and off court, but definitely have to earn both of them. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely agree with that. It's um, 
I mean, we've only won the first final and all it's given us is a week off, which doesn't mean anything to us. No. So, um, yeah, get down to business. We've got two more weeks to go. And, yeah, it's kind of funny on our days off we end up hanging out with each yeah. other anyway when we don't actually have to. So, yeah, yeah. no, we've got a really good group yeah. and we make sure we enjoy those times because we won't be playing with this group forever. We know no. that, so we have to make the most exactly. of it while it's happening. That's yeah. wonderful. I mean, I've played footy for like 20 plus years and, and you're right, that sport. Sort of you, you've got forever in yeah. sports, so it's just yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, outside of Nepal, what sort of interest do you have, Georgia? Um, I'm pretty obsessed with my dog. <laughs> um, I have a retired greyhound, so um, he's come to recovery a couple of times in his little jumpers. Um, but yeah, not heaps, you know, the usual hanging out, got my family here, a little nephew that um, is a lot of fun. So yeah, nothing too crazy. A lot of netball takes up a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie, similar with you? Or? Yeah, but I, um, I study podiatry at uni, so feet, for whoever doesn't know that, don't have a foot fetish, so let's get that out of the way. Um, and yeah, just a classic love my dogs. I've got, I like to adopt all my family's dogs, dogs so I've got a staffy bulldog and two labs. Oh, wow. um, yeah, not all in the one house, but I will <laughs> definitely go make sure I walk them all at, at some stage during the week. Um, and when I don't have uni, I'm usually catching up with these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Which is very, not sad, but it kind of is sometimes. Oh, that would be enjoyed to company. It's true. No, we sound kind of creepy because I'm kind of obsessed with my dog as well. <laughs> Kelpie, which I play with my sister and we both um, will say is both of our Kelpies and, and a few times all the dogs have rocked up to recovery so honestly it sounds so weird that we all just do pretty much the same thing. Yeah, we're dogs all friends eat. and our dogs are all French. <laughs> One big happy stuff. family. Yeah, so. I know, it's not even a cliche. <laughs> hey, it's working. So. Yeah, exactly. Keep doing it. Now you girls are both the daughters of superstar um, Magpies players, oh, um, Scotty Hodges yeah. and, uh, and Bruce Abernathy. Um, do you girls both follow the footy as well? Yep. Yeah. Try to. They haven't done very well this year, so <laughs> no, no, definitely try and um, I don't, didn't really get a choice growing up who I barracked no. for, but I'm glad Dad picked what I'd laid and it's kind of just one of those things that stays in the family, you've got to kind of get around them. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep, support them through thick and thin, good seasons and bad seasons. Yep. <laughs> Went into both grand finals, one they won and the one they lost by 100 points. <laughs> Sad face. Oh, yeah, very <laughs> nice. Some you lose some. <laughs> and you follow the footy as well? Or? Um, yeah, my dad um, hails from Canberra, so he's a Union fan. Um, so yeah, we're a bit more tuned into the um, all of these, but you know, we'll, we'll watch footy on a on a weekend. You know? <laughs> and now, before I let you girls go, we've got to finish off with the thing that's just taking over Australia and the world at the moment is the Bachelor. Um, oh, oh yeah. Who's gonna? I was like the Survivor. Who's gonna win it, Julia? I honestly don't watch it. I don't have you? no time for that show. I'm sorry, I don't even have an answer for you, but maybe Chelsea. Chelsea. Play sport. <laughs> one, of the, one of the blonde ones that play sport. I don't know. She's actually good in our team. No, nah, Chelsea's going to win it. I think the engineer. Whatever. Yeah. Oh, good fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but Survivor. One. That. What about Survivor? Oh yeah, that's, <laughs> that's pretty cool. I, I just wanted to watch it. Yeah, it's awesome. Who do you reckon's going to win? I reckon that uh, Dave guy. Yeah, yeah Dave will yeah. Luke. Yeah. 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 Or Janine yep. if she uh, takes it to the end. Yeah, who knows? But, mm. And Georgia? I don't watch it either. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm more of a Netflix gal, yeah. sorry. Yeah, no, it's all good. <laughs> well, Georgia Beaton, uh, Charlie Hodges, G. Abernathy, thanks so much for joining me today and chewing the fat. Thanks to Darren Peters and to Leanne Eichler for giving me some very inf interesting information on these girls. <laughs> and all the very best in a couple of weeks' time in the Thank grand final. Hope thanks. you can go for three in a row Hopefully, and uh, yeah. another end of season trip to exactly. tell more stories about. So thanks a lot, girls. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. Thank you very Cheers. much. Thank, Thank you. 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 Thank you.